In this video, we're going to look at a talk called Drafting Behind Akamai. This was given at SIGCOM in 2006. Our primary interest here is looking at their experimental methodology. In the previous video, we discussed background on what content distribution networks do, as well as how the DNS works. So please make sure you've reviewed that video before watching this one. Fortunately, we have the original slides that were used by the authors when they gave this talk in 2006. To recap what we said in the previous video, Akamai performs many, many measurements of the internet in order to provide the service that they offer as a content distribution network. We also know from observing internet traffic and a number of previous studies that the direct path offered by BGP through the internet is often not the fastest path. And so it may be possible to get increased bandwidth or lower latency by introducing a detour into that path. As we've mentioned before, overlay networks are a common solution to providing applications or services that the underlying IP network doesn't offer. But building a view of the underlying network in order to do so in an efficient manner can itself require many, many measurements that take away from our efficiency gain. If everyone offering an overlay service does their own measurements, that can be very redundant and non-scalable. It would be nice if there was a common service provided that performed these measurements one time and allowed all of the overlay networks to use them. So the question is, given that the results of Akamai's measurements are published to some level of granularity through the public DNS database, can other overlay networks reuse these measurements in providing their own overlay service? This would reduce the amount of redundant measurements that had to be performed over the internet. So our case study here is a CDN-driven one-hop source routing, so a detour-type routing to provide alternatives to the default path through the internet provided by BGP between a particular source and destination. So in each of these clouds, we have an overlay router that is located somewhat closely to an Akamai point of presence. In the previous video, we reviewed how Akamai works as a general example of a CDN using multiple layers of DNS to decide where a particular request should be served and to distribute load across multiple servers and multiple network links. So now we'll focus on our example application, the one hop source routing. So first we need to map CDN servers to overlay nodes such that a measurement that is relevant for a CDN server will also be relevant for an overlay node that is located somewhat closely to that CDN server. So in this case, the researchers are using the Planet Lab infrastructure in order to perform these measurements and they ran this over a two month period. They used 140 Planet Lab nodes. This is out of about 1600 Planet Lab nodes available at the time. And these were distributed across North America, Europe, Asia, and South America. So every 20 seconds, each of the Planet Lab nodes was running a DNS query for a CNAME for a website that is served on the Akamai CDN. And so after traversing the DNS hierarchy, that request would get to an Akamai low-level DNS server, which would return a response for one of the Akamai edge servers. And depending on which edge server the Planet Lab node was directed to, it could make some inference about the properties of the network paths to the overlay servers. So here's some examples. And what we're looking at in these plots are the edge server IP addresses over a couple day period. So for example, in Berkeley, we see that most of the time, the results come back with two IP addresses, the same two IP addresses, which we could think of as the primary edge servers for that location. However, during the daytime, we see that additional IP addresses are being returned, meaning that sometimes the primary servers are busy. And so to distribute load, those requests are getting farmed out to a larger number of servers. However, looking at the plot for Purdue, we can see that the results are significantly different. Purdue sees an order of magnitude more total DNS servers and does not have the constant two results being supplied most of the time. This is because Purdue is located in the middle of Indiana, not close to a major tech center. And so it's likely that its requests are being bounced around to Akamai points of presence in other places. We can also look at the results for particular domain names. So depending on which vantage point is being used, meaning which Planet Lab host is doing the lookup, some of the hosts only see a few servers, 
Many of the hosts see 10 to 50 servers, and a smaller number see many, many servers. Looking at the different Akamai customers compared to one another, we can see that there's clearly different levels of service. So we can infer that some domains are not hosted in some of the locations, while other domains are hosted in many locations, and then some domains are hosted in very few locations. Another thing that we can measure in this environment is the time between redirections. So a particular Planet Lab node is performing a query and getting the same result back and the same result back. And then after some period of time, it gets a new result. And so looking at the time between those changes in results, we see that for the Berkeley location, it was typically around 20 seconds. However, for Korea and Brazil, it was commonly between one and 200 seconds. And so that could inform how often a new query should be performed in order to get current results without performing excess queries. In the previous video, we talked about how Akamai works with respect to the DNS. And so now we'll look at the potentials for performing one hop source routing as an overlay based on the observed changes in the DNS. To do this, for each Planet Lab node, the authors chose the 10 best Akamai Edge servers and performed measurements to those servers. And they found that the CDN redirections correlated to network latencies for some of the Planet Lab locations, but not necessarily for all. So in some locations, there was not a nearby Akamai point of presence. And so this methodology didn't work for every Planet Lab location. They also looked at it uh, depending on which domain name was being queried against Akamai and saw that some of the domain names were much better represented than others. So queries for those domains had a closer correlation to the network behavior. The result of this allowed them to establish a set of overlay nodes close to a set of Akamai edge servers. And so depending on what result this, the source got from the DNS server, it could choose which of the overlay nodes to route traffic through. And so this resulted in a number of what they're calling Akamai paths, even though the traffic is not actually flowing through the Akamai network or the Akamai server, it's being recommended to take a particular path based on the Akamai DNS results. In the results, we see that on the Taiwan to UK path, for example, the Akamai recommended path was the same as the best path most of the time, over 90% of the time. However, in the reverse direction, the Akamai recommended path was not the best path 90% of the time. However, it was still significantly better than the BGP direct path. Looking at those results across a number of pairwise sources and destinations, we see that often the Akamai recommended path was comparable to the direct path and a significant amount of the time, the direct path was better than the Akamai recommended path. And only 25% of the time, the Akamai recommended path was better than the direct path. So this leads to the need to be selective about when to use the Akamai path. So the question then is how frequently should this decision be made and how should it be chosen? And here we can see that the more frequent the updates, meaning more frequently the query is made and the choice to use the Akamai path or not is made, the better the results are. So on the left side of the graph, we see that the, the two different selection mechanisms can both do significantly better than the direct path if the choice is made often enough. So in conclusions, we see this interesting example of using the CDN published results from the DNS to establish another overlay application. We hope you enjoyed this talk and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it to be useful, please click the like button. To be notified when more videos are posted for this class, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell.